Isn't this so cool? Check this out. Welcome to Transcend with Debbie. I am live with Hero and Miguel Gonzalez, who have joined me on a beautiful Sunday in honor of spirit and community. And I'm just going to give it a second for people to jump in, to follow. And we're going to be on Beings Network, Derek Akora's page, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Ah, we're all over today. That's what's up. <laughs> I'm excited. Welcome, Hero, to Transcend with Debbie. And welcome, Miguel, to Transcend with Debbie. It's an honor. Definitely. Thank you for having me here, Miguel. Yeah. Very nice to meet you virtually. I'm really looking forward to meeting you in person. Uh, Kejo, thank you for having me. Yes, definitely. We, you know, when this um, event I planned, right, this event we're about to jump into together, all of us with some amazing ambassadors for spirit. Um, I woke up one day and I was just like, the energy was fire. And you know, when spirit gets that ignition, that light within you, you just run with it and the right people are just aligned and you've all come to uh, my awareness through the guidance of spirit. And so I want to say thank you for accepting the invitation to come to the Ventura County area to hold space for the community and for everyone else who's going to be joining. Um, it's going to be really fun. And I'm truly looking forward to meeting you both again. And well, Miguel for the first time in person. And again, for to meet D uh, David. And for those that are joining us, thank you on Instagram. We have Stefan, we have Dana, Tilsa. I see you guys and I see you guys on YouTube as well. So for those who don't know you, Hero, please introduce yourself. Aho, yat a she a hero in she the shoe in the slim, the Vilagana bus chain, us the shiche, the Vilagana de Chanel. So, in that language, I just introduced myself, uh, my name. Uh, my name is uh, Hero. Uh, some people call me David Hero Averly. Uh, I'm a medicinal person from my tribe, also known as a guardian who represents the High Council. And I'm also the founder of uh, Silver Eagle Productions and founder of Unearthing the Supernatural and a lead investigator of there too and so pretty much what we do is uh in unearthing the supernatural is we try to give a voice to spirits and kind of showcase how indigenous people interact with ghosts and spirits and teach others how to be able to interact with beings who have been here uh and that we've interacted with long before any colonization or settlers kind of came this way we've always been interacting with spirits and so kind of telling them hey this is kind of how we do it as well as we want to be able to inspire the youth to show them that, hey, this is a great way to connect and to learn your language, learn your heritage, your ancestral life ways, go back to your elders and uh, keep these old ways going because these spirits need that communication. And so um, I've kind of been coined as uh, the native exorcist is kind of lately what's been happening with that. So um, dealing uh, with my guardianship and the medicine man uh, upbringing that I had, it was to kind of mainly to combat kind of the darker side of things to deal with ghosts and things of the beyond kind of my western guardianship roles and so just taking up that name all right i'll be the native exorcist and i'll be there to, to help as much as i can and uh, with silver Eagle productions we just want to give a voice to underrepresented communities and uh, hopefully be able to to lift up those voices for the masses to hear right what a beautiful role um, and responsibility as well, Hero, that you have stepped into to be an ambassador for spirit and for the darker energies is not an easy path. And as a paranormal investigator, you are taking time to dissect and to investigate the root cause. And I, and I love when I read your bio, you know, your, your goal is to bring peace and harmony. And I think ultimately many of us, when we're taking the, the steps to go within, right, that is the ultimate goal is to find that inner peace and harmony with all the energies that we've connected to and intertwined with. And, and the beauty of what you said, to talk to those that have walked the path before us of mm -hmm. spirit and honoring them. Yes, um, that is a beauty, um, beautiful path, but also a difficult one to walk. And so thank you for being a service to spirit and to be here. Um, and we're going to open up with Q&As. And I'd like to go to my dear friend, Miguel Gonzalez. Um, Miguel, please introduce yourself and when you met spirit as well. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Debbie, thank you so much for inviting me and Hero to be here. Uh, I look forward to meeting both of you finally in person. So that'll be a very wonderful experience. Um, and. You know, for myself, I work with spirit in the, in the modalities of mediumship, so spirit communication, 
loved ones. And then uh, spirit art, so bringing through portraits of, of your loved ones in spirit or spirit guides as well. And I would say that my baby is the trance, uh, moving yes. into ultra states of awareness to allow my spirit guide to come forward and to communicate with the world here and also to help those that you know need that extra support with the healing along their journey to help them see the clarity that they may may need to see for themselves during this time to, to feel better and to feel empowered and to know that we're not alone and that spirit is by our side guiding us and helping us and sometimes we need that you know that special soul, soul on the other side to, to remind us of that gift um, and so it's it's been a, a wonderful journey to work with spirit in this way it really is um miguel and i had the honor to work with you for a couple of years and allow us to hold space together for spirit and there is just this gentleness that comes through you um, even when you are working with the heavier energies or you're holding space for someone that is in grief and, and you are bringing forward the essence. And when we speak of trance, right, a lot of times others don't really fully understand what happens to um, us as individuals when they just recognize, oh, that was different. The voice changed, the body movement changed, the behaviors changed, you know, the personality is no longer this individual. Why did that happen? You know, let's bring awareness, Miguel, when you're in that state. And I know Hero also touches the same um, way of working with spirit because I also had the honor to sit in ceremony with him as he brings forward the elders. Um, what would you like to, the community to know? What is happening to you and why is it so important to have that sacredness and, and that loving gentleness that you bring forward when you're bringing the essence of spirit forward? Yeah, you know, I, I feel for myself that it's a great honor to allow spirit to work with me in this way. Uh, I feel like this has been the greatest gift that I received from God in allowing my spirit guide Braveheart to come through and communicate. And it is a very sacred space to be in more than anything and for that person that is with us to experience also. So when I move into that place, I'm doing my, my best to just simply calm my mind and stay out of the way. And that doesn't mean that I'm not aware of what's happening or absent. I still am to some degree, but I'm surrendering to the energy. And what spirit is doing is, is they're taking control spiritually. It's not a possession where, you know, you don't have any control or anything. It's like, yes, you can bring yourself out if you need to. But it's the control of the energy that they are, are creating in that space to then manipulate the frequencies, such as the vocal cords, to then bring forth their voice. And to me, you know, I find it amazing because, you know, what Braveheart has shared with me is that in order for him to bring forth his voice, it's like he has to remember what his voice sounded like here on the earth because they don't necessarily communicate in the same way that we do it's more telepathic emotional but he has to bring forth that vibration in the voice by holding you know the the energy and manipulating my body in the way that it needs to for him to come forward uh, as best as possible and you know also for those that are listening there is no harm when it comes to connecting with spirit in this way i was aware of the fact a couple of weeks ago that when i started that um, Braveheart was building a bubble around me and it's a healing bubble that is to protect me first when he's coming in and then it builds so that that communication can happen and I thought that to be really beautiful um, so I hope that that brings a bit of insight into uh, trans mediumship oh Debbie we cannot hear you <laughs> oh that that is that's I didn't even touch it <laughs> That's the that's the power of frequency and spirit working with the with the energies, right? Um, Miguel, thank you for saying that. And I think um, what I got as you were speaking, also though, Miguel, you have trained and you have sat and you have learned to develop the muscle to trust. And that I think when the fear begins is when we're unaware, we're not aware of the energies and why this is happening. And so you explaining it to the community because you embody that 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 blend and the mouth because you were taught and because you were awakened to those levels. Now, for those who have never experienced that and those who have not understood it, that is why there is fear. So that is it's why it's so important for people like you 
me, Hero, and the community to hold space, to elevate the vibration and frequency so that one can feel into it to say, what does this mean for me? And why is the spirit talking to me? And why are they coming forward to share their story? Because there is a lot that can be feel, um, obviously, the mysterious, unexplained, and the phenomena that manifest. Things that fly because of vibration. You know, my son, I got to share this story and you guys can um, sit here with it. I laugh because, you know, it's my son and, <laughs> and that's just me. <laughs> but, but in real life, someone who experiences may not laugh. So he's like, mom. You're bringing the energy home, mom. I go, what do you mean? His light was flickering on and off, on and off. And the door opens and closes and I'm laughing, I'm laughing. He goes, but mom, it was unplugged. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, not knowing, right? Not, not knowing that it was unplugged. I happened to jump, jump into a reading and the reader brought forward my mother and said she was there with my son. Because that happened that day, I was able to say, that's your Nana. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. She's got your back, right? So, but if I didn't get that meeting or that reading, I would have had to sit. I would have had to try to understand why is, it, why is the energy coming to his room? who is trying to communicate to my son. And for him, he's cool with it at the mo after the fact, but in the moment that can be very like, okay, in the middle of the night, the door is opening. Okay, my light is going off and on. I, for myself, I find comfort in it. When I was going through some personal stuff and I was laying down and, you know, my light would go on and off when I couldn't sleep at night. And I knew it was my mom. And I knew that I needed that extra love from spirit world. And for me, it brought me comfort. But because I was awakened to those energies, you know, and how many times now, and I'm going to come to you, Hero, because you're a paranormal investigator, okay? And what happens when you're working with someone who's experienced high level of energies in their home, you have now gotten, to, gotten them at the level of fear. And now you're coming to them at the level of, please just make it stop. And they don't want to understand it. They just want it to be done. They want it to be out and in, you know, they want it to be out. So how do you work through the energies of the person that you're going to connect to, which is the family first, because you got to work with the energies that are being presented. And then you're also working with the energies of the spirit. And I don't think people realize the layer that you're about to step into before you get into the actual investigation. Oh, yeah. You... And that's all dealing with the pre-investigation and, and interacting usually either with an owner or what we call the patient, uh, the one who's requesting the help. You, you get to see them first. Like what's, what's, what's their story? What's their energy? What's their background? What, have they, what do they have with them? And what I mean with that by that is, is there anything prior that has kind of um, maybe at odds with those beings that are there right now? Is there anything that they have on them that needs to be fixed first before I go in to interact with that spiritual being? And so usually um, by the time we get there, there's a little bit of understanding. There's already a communication that kind of happened. And it's like, okay, we got to help this patient out. And then it's all dealing with the diagnosis. It's all dealing with the, uh, the initial contacts that you have with them. And so usually some... Um, uh, when you're dealing with a patient who's kind of more agitated and just does, doesn't want those beings there, doesn't want to interact with them, and, and is out of balance, you're like, okay, let's uh, let's see first. And you remove them from the situation if possible. You'd be like, okay, as you you kind of snip those lines if it's a negative interaction. If it's a positive and misunderstood interaction, that's also very important to kind of look into as well because it could be just them not quite understanding and that spirit's there to help them. But that's kind of all dealing with that, that, that diagnosis stage. If it's something that is at odds with their energy, it's like, okay, hold on. Let's remove them from that situation first. And so you kind of snip those connections if it's negative um, from that location or that area to that person. And then you help the person first. You calm them down a little bit. You kind of get them back on center. You usually do like protection herbs, songs, ceremonies to kind of get them at least a little bit 
calm for uh, like a temporary state of calm for right now because if you don't do that and you just go straight into a location or you go straight into an area and there's still that connection with the with the host or the patient then some negative things can happen and those beings can actually jump to that person and there's a lot of things that can happen so you got to try your best to mitigate the situation and isolate the 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 beings isolate the energies and then you hear all sides you hear from the patient you hear from the spiritual beings you hear from the energies around things that are older than those spiritual beings okay yes. what is this area that we're on right now what's its history what's its connection and then you kind of go beyond that where what kind of time are we in right now what time of year what's the moon cycle like what's the star beings how are they interacting even the weather the, uh, the shadow the light all aspects you kind of mention and acknowledge all that in your prayer yes. acknowledge all that in your diagnosis and from there you start dealing with it bit by bit you're like okay maybe it's this being or maybe it's attached to this person and whatever they have is at odds with the energy of this place it may not be this place is bad it may be something that's attached to the patient and so it's a very case-by-case -case basis and the overall thing that you try to do is try to fit all the puzzle pieces together untangle the the knots and get down to the root of things you know, there yes. may be things that's kind of like ah, we don't need to worry about that like oh who's bothering me is this Ooh, we lost him for a second so for those that are in here we'll just give him a moment for his energy for the uh line to reconnect miguel i see you because i see your face moving so i could see you um how are you adjusting to this miguel when you're hearing um, on what he does as a paranormal investigator, how does that just shift for you also to hear him on how depth he goes? Yeah, you know, I think it's wonderful to hear that uh, Hero is really focusing on listening to everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think as mediums, perhaps in my experience, we tend to focus on spirit. And so to hear Hero talk about, let's hear all sides of the story, I think brings a really beautiful perspective to the awareness of like it's it's a group it's a group healing that needs to to happen yes to bring balance and harmony hero um we're just stepping back in welcome back um you know, <laughs> sorry about that's, that it's the energies we hold it's the energies you know and and there is so much on a land you know that has happened from lifetimes before lifetimes i've heard people you know can have that whoa deja vu moment or that that effect as they walked into a building as if they saw something and it wasn't that but you're in different timelines and so you're now bringing a, a different awareness of the energies of how far back they can go and i think that's important to understand that when you're investigating something not even just something because even not only a home but also objects because objects also carry the vibration of where it originated from, even down to the person who made it. And so if the person is in disharmony when they're creating or they're working or they're cooking, they're going to fill into the energies of the disharmony. So that is how far the energy can go if you're super sensitive and then you are wanting to understand why is my child crying or why is this person grouchy or why is this person moody? What were they around today? Where was the environment like? So you want to pause. And so I want to pause for a second here to give the community an opportunity to ask any questions in reference to any property experiences that you may be having, anything that does with um, maybe how, you know, what, what's coming to my mind right now, Hero, is the prayer, how you've included the home. Many people want a prayer to, to bring balance and peace into the home. What, would, what words would you suggest one can use um, just to bring that inner peace around within themselves and home? Oh, yeah. So anyone, feel free to ask questions in the, in, in the comment sections and we'll, we'll pick it up. But when it comes to the home, when it comes to praying for the home, when we indigenous people get a new home, when we kind of move in or we, we move somewhere else, one of the first things we do is we always give offering to the home. And you acknowledge the home as a spirit. You acknowledge the home as a protector. And in that prayer, when, when you're kind of giving an offering, it could be a, what, we, what we usually do is we make a dinner or the first meal in the home. And then part of that dinner, we get little bits and pieces. We go to the eastern side of the home, we clear off the topsoil, and we add some water. 
and we put that food down as offering as well as well as some some of our herbs if you have it um, depending on what tribe you're from or your background you kind of leave that offering there as well but you pray to the home and you talk to its spirit and what that means is when i lay my head here i want to be able to sleep when i bring my family here i want to raise them in a good way and when they come home that they're able to sleep they're able to rest and they're able to grow and we are able to have this place as our safe place take care of us no matter what's out there we're going to be able to come home take care of us from the elements take care of us from outside life out there you're going to be our home and they say when the home creaks when they, the scientists oh it's just settling or it's the weather temperature outside to us indigenous people when the home creaks like that it's breathing and that's how you know you can talk to it and so you hear it creak and you talk to your home yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, and you acknowledge it. And acknowledgement is, is, is really powerful, really key. Yes, I love that. Someone mentioned salt. Um, how would you utilize or use salt? Salt? So salt's a, a really strong um, ionizer, and it's something that really connects to energy. So to us indigenous people, how we use salt is, um, oh, well, I'm, I'm a Shihan, I'm salt clan. So um, how we utilize salts is I'll carry it in my jish, my medicine pouches. And anytime I'm feeling kind of down or low on energy, I just got done with the ceremony maybe, or I got done dealing with something very spiritual and I feel like, oh, I need to pick me up. So instead of an energy drink, I'll take a pinch of salt and that goes straight to your spirit. That goes straight to revitalizing that um, we usually get the 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 big grains, not the not quite table salt. Table salt in emergencies is fine, but like the natural salt that's out in nature, getting the pieces of that and having that melt in your mouth and praying with it, that goes straight to protection. Um, I remember when I was younger, kind of I was 13, 14 years old, getting done with interacting with those spiritual beings out there, and we ran out of salt. What do I do? Let's go to McDonald's. Let's get some fries. And, so, oh, wow. and that helps kind of bring back some energy. So just that aspect of salt is super important, especially for what we do. Yes. Pauline is saying across the front door as well. So I was also taught to put the salt in front of the door. You know, you put the line and that they can pass this salt. It's negative energy. How do you feel about about that, Hero? Because I, but I, I, I want to stop there for a second before I go into the next question, because what Spirit is showing me, is it's from internal. The salt you just did was internally. And so that um, right there is the power is what I'm being shown. So how, what do you say about the salt across the, across the doors? So I'm um, gonna be frank, indigenous people, we don't do that. <laughs> we don't waste good salt. That could be, um, <laughs> that could be, you could ingest it and you have to sweep that off eventually. What are you doing? But when it comes to protections and in very emergency situations, you're putting your energy into that. That's a very strong, like I said, an ionizer that connects to your energy very strong. It connects to your prayer. So in a very intense situations, you put your energy into that. It draws it in. It's like putting a bunch of crystals down and you have all that down right there, that energy, and it's going to fight for you. It's going to protect you. So in very strong emergency situations, yes, it'll work. Yes. Yeah, so eat the salt. Oh, I love that. Absolutely love that. And I talked to Annie, Erica, who's going to be bringing you down um, to the 805 Ventura County. We are going to have you here at the home of the levee, which is um, has been seen on Ghost Adventures. I've had the honor to do an investigation with them and walk through with them. And we are going to be staying there overnight. And so for those, this is actually something we're doing um, as individuals. And Erica, thank you for holding space and watching um, the investigation you're about to do there. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and I know that for those that are in here who are new to the paranormal world, please don't be afraid to ask any questions to Hero because of his knowledge and his teachings. He has been learning since he is eight years old by his family. This is a journey that he has been on for so many years. The intelligence that he is walking, not only from spirit, but of self, knowing um, this is a time where you guys want to definitely ask your questions. Miguel, same thing as he's connected to his grandmother and the Virgin Guadalupe has presented to him and has de devoted himself to his own team of spirit 
to be able to work with them to help us as a community. This is a true honor and a gift that we have right now in our hands. And, and right now, if there's questions or doubt or something that you, any of you have been thinking, no question is a wrong question. So please feel free to ask because we cannot um, be a service if we don't participate. So we're here to help. Um, as I say that, I'm gonna pause and wait for the comments to come in. And if Hero or Miguel, is there anything that's coming to your mind or to your awareness that you feel that you want to share? Miguel, I have a question, if you don't mind. Yeah. Not at all. Please go ahead. So, Miguel, when you get into your in your trance states, um, can you describe, I know it would be really helpful to the community, your mental checklist, your spiritual checklist on what, because I know you go into the store and everything, you probably still feel things, you probably still going around doing all that. But and when you get into setting up, however it is you set up to get into your trances, what is your spiritual checklist, your mental checklist to get going and get forward into that state of mind? Oh, that's a very good question. For me, prayer is very important. That's the first thing on my list. I need to open the space with the prayer. And as I'm doing and connecting, as I'm saying and connecting to my prayer, I'm already moving into that space as I'm speaking. And so I always call upon God, uh, Jesus, Mary, Braveheart, the angels, and I call upon their protection to protect the space so that only the souls that they, that they, um, that they allow to come in that are necessary will come in. Um, and so that also helps me to, to, feel, to feel good. Um, and so that, that's the first thing. And then for me, I really, after that, it's really about just trying to relax as best as I can and moving my awareness into I kind of focus it down into my abdominal my stomach area so i bring my attention here and so i wait for the vibration to gradually change and as it changes it's that's how i know when we're ready to to start speaking and usually before braveheart starts to talk i feel this shift within me where i feel like this weighted blanket that kind of drops over me it kind of pulls me down and this is weight that just holds me um and so then i know that i'm i'm ready but for me it's the the prayer um that i i always start with uh -huh. yes, beautiful, Miguel. we do have two questions here um erica is asking can you still do an offering to your home after years of living there asking for a friend oh always you can always do an offering to your home and it'll be super appreciative of you acknowledging it and being there, feeding that spirit and empowering it. It's pretty much what, what that whole aspect is and acknowledging that it's there to take care of you and it's there to, to bless you and help you grow. So anytime, anytime an offering will, is, I'm sure it would be greatly appreciated of your home. <laughs> yes. Then Mary is asking, do you believe in the broomstick over the front door? Miguel, what are your thoughts on that? You know, I believe that it's the intention that we set behind that will create the manifestation of what we want to bring forward. So if you feel that the broomstick is a, is a symbol of protection or help or guidance that you need into your life, then go for it. That's, that's what you need for yourself. I am a little bit more of like, I just trust in God and I trust in my spirit team and I feel that that's what I need for my own self. But I think that whatever each soul needs to help them, you know, with what they're requesting or asking for is is, is great. Yeah. Definitely. And then for us, um, I know for my my tribe and the some, several other tribes, um, we do put uh, something uh, uh, something similar over our doors. So we'll have usually an arrow over our front doorways. And then also the women folk, um, they'll put their uh, their mixing sticks up there, and then their 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 brush, um, kind of the reeds that they use for brushes and stuff. Sometimes they'll put that up there. And there's a lot of old stories, and it'll take me hours to talk about those old stories. But they are forms of protection as well as showing that the home is there for growth and to take care of your mind and to keep things straight on the good road. So uh, we have aspects of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love that you guys have brought some love forward, some knowledge forward and beautiful responses. And I agree with you, Miguel, it's the intention. And, and it also goes down to our culture 
you know, how would we raise the traditions and the ceremonies? They're, they're the way that was passed on down to you. And so they're embedded within your DNA. And so within your belief system, you're, it's going to work because of your belief. And so there is a growth as we progress and there is transition when we transcend. And so those energies always shift just as you're in the journey. So um, I absolutely adore the conversation that we're having right now and the knowledge that's being brought forward. Um, I'd like to say hello to Kevin as well. Kevin Lewis is out in Canada. Hugs to you. And Keith has a question, Miguel, and, and it says, have you ever gone into a trance without knowing but the feeling is so amazing? Uh, you know, I feel that I, I'm always aware of the fact that I'm going into trance because of the energy that's so present. Perhaps I may have not have given it that that definition before because it was just happening. But now that I understand it, I, I am aware of the fact that I'm going into trance and it and it does feel really amazing. Um, it's this very comforting energy that just surrounds the space and it just starts to emanate and flow within um, whomever is communicating with. And so that's really wonderful. Uh, I'll share really quickly here. My first experience in trance, I feel, was when actually when I was in my dream. Um, when I started to become aware of trance, I would ask spirit, I need to understand what it feels like so that I know what's happening. And so in trance, excuse me, in my dream, I actually went into trance and I was like the observer of the experience. And that's what then allowed me to understand, oh, this is the feeling. I felt this before. So then I was able to connect that uh, experience into what I understand now as, as trans what it, or what it feels like for me because I feel that it would, uh, everybody has a bit of a different experience when they're moving into that awareness uh, but for me uh, it's always sort of just this uh, sleepiness that comes over me uh, with a beautiful energy beautiful you know I, I like to ask um, a lot of people who want to come to the event and to see you in person um, what is your intent for the community when they come to see you? What are your hopes to see and to offer so one can come to say, hey, I want to see Miguel, I want to see Hero, and I want to feel the essence of spirit. What, um, first, I'll start with Hero. What would you like to do to hold space for those that are going to be coming to our event, My House is Alive? Oh, yeah, so with, with me, I wanted to provide that means of people to like a, a way for people to ask questions a way for people who are exploring who who are trying to find their way find their path and i myself i can't point exactly you know, what your path is going to be but what i can do is point you in the right direction and hopefully help you and give you some tools give you some knowledge to help you out on your journey because everyone has their own journey everyone has their own connection and my personal uh, connections, my knowledge, the stuff that I'm willing to give to people. I hope that it's able to help you guys out in some shape or form, whether it's through encouragement, whether it's through figuring out how to do something, or at least uh, knowing what's around and acknowledging what's around. So I'm hopefully going to be there to answer any questions, to uh, laugh, to spread that yeah. love and that healing, and to just enjoy time uh, being among spirits. Yes, it's going to be awesome. Miguel, I know that you also, both of you are guest speakers as well, and um, we'll be speaking and teaching. Um, and so from nine to four, we or nine to two to three, we'll say, we'll say four, we'll have speakers and event during the event, there'll be vendors offering readings, um, energy work and healer healing, which Miguel will be offering as well. Um, but Miguel, what is your intent and inspiration for the community of the Ventura County area? You know, I hope that whomever joins us at the event is able to receive what they need most during this time in their life to help them to, to move forward on their journey. Um, my intention, you know, when I ask Spirit to join us is for the person to receive what they need. And sometimes that is Spirit letting you know that they've been with you throughout your life. And so that'll come through in the, in the communication if it's necessary. And, you know, the healings that we'll be bringing forward be catered to every person individually because every person's on their own journey uh, and experiencing life um, in their own unique way. And so I hope that at least you you leave with a sense of peace within your heart. And that, to me, is, is enough. 
Yes. You both are beautiful ambassadors for spirit. I want to say thank you for being a service to the community today, holding space, offering your love and your wisdom and your time. I cannot wait to see you guys here. Um, it's going to be so fun. Um, thank you both for being on Transcend with Debbie. Um, and I will go back to Miguel, final message that you'd like to leave the community with today, Miguel. And the final message I would say to you to give yourself some time to be with your own spirit, most importantly, and just recognize what that feels like for you. And then along with that is to open the door and the space to connect with your spirit guides. Um, that is the most beautiful experience uh, that I've experienced myself connecting with my guide. And, you know, they, they are there. They've always been with you since you were born and even before you came to the earth. Um, and so this soul absolutely knows you and they are there willing to help you and support you. And so if you open that space and you communicate with them and you have you truly have a true friend that's there with you for every aspect and moment of your life. And yes. that is absolutely just beautiful. Yes. Thank you, Miguel. And David, Ooh. hero, what would you like the collective to know today? Uh, who? The spiritual, whole, spiritual aspect, spiritual world, holy beings, however you believe that energy is there, it's constant. It's always around. And it's always going to be there to, to, to interact with you and you're going to cross paths with it. So having that acknowledgement, having that understanding, at least a little bit of it, of that the world's flowing. And so how you tap into it, tap into it with love, tap into it with an open mind, an open heart, and still also protect yourself because that's kind of my big thing is always protect yourselves when you're interacting with the, the worlds around you. But also, once you do have that connection and you do have those sacred spaces established, interacting with spirits is one of those most beautiful things. Interacting with your ancestry, interacting with the road that you're walking, interacting with the holy people, and just witnessing the beautiful events that transpire every day that busy people often overlook. Take the time to slow down. Take the time to acknowledge that beauty. Look at that sunrise, look at that sunset, look at that painting that those holy people uh, placed in the sky. Look at the stars, feel the warmth, the cold, feel everything around you. And when you're able to experience and feel that, life is so, so beautiful. Le Jonge, it's called. Yes, I love that. So y'all, if you're in the area and you want to meet these two beautiful souls in person, they will be in the 805 September 14th from 9 to 4. We will be um, selling tickets through Eventbrite, but also follow them because they are always doing something for spirit. Miguel is always holding space, just as Hero is. And so if you cannot make it, follow them, support them. And also don't miss out because they're always doing something. I appreciate you guys. I stay, say thank you. Have a beautiful rest of your Sunday wherever you all are in the world. And I say God bless. Until next time. Thank you, Hero. Thank you, Miguel. And thank you to the community who held space. I hope. Bye.